What I want to do in this video is have a little introduction to Edward the Sixth, who succeeded his father Henry the Eighth in 1547. So 1547 was when Henry died, and at this point, the young prince was only nine years old. This did cause some problems. Because of the fact he was so young, it was seen that he couldn't really rule uh, England on his own due to his lack of responsibility being a nine-year-old child. So for this reason, Henry VIII, before his death, so Henry VIII, before his death, established a regency council. Okay. He established a regency council. And what that means was he set up a council that would rule England on Edward's behalf. And he was put under protection You with the Duke of Somerset, Edward Seymour. Edward Seymour was his uncle because Henry VIII married Jane Seymour. Jane Seymour was the third wife of Henry VIII and his sorry her brother was the uncle edward seymour who became a, a protector and therefore was in established and was told that he was to run this council so the regency council was established and it was led by seymour okay now when henry died seymour began to dominate in the council this is something that he wasn't supposed to do he was supposed to be almost first among equals within the council. He was supposed to be the one in charge of the council, but also not the one who made every single decision. And he decided to uh, begin by introducing almost political intrigue within the council. So he'd pit members of the council against each other. He'd pit them against each other causing the council to divide. And so he was ruling, effectively ruling England on his own due to the fact that there was a council that was split and it was divided. Now, he wasn't a very strong political uh, leader. He was very weak politically and no political talent. And we will go into a bit more detail about this in different, in separate videos, more spe looking more specifically at society and foreign policy. However, at the moment, we're just going to go in a rundown of the work that Somerset did and the work that Northumberland did afterwards. So things did begin to deteriorate for Edward Seymour when he failed to deal with the 1549 Rebellion. We'll talk a little bit more about the 1549 Rebellion later. However, you notice that this is only two years after... Henry's death. So, Henry's death. So that really does give you an in, an indication of how things began to deteriorate. We will talk about how things were deteriorating before Henry's death even happened. However, only two years in to Edward's reign, we have the lack uh, of support from the people, and therefore rising up into a rebellion. And this led to a coup. So a council, the council organised a coup to remove Edward Seymour from his position. So this was a number of reasons why. Mainly it was his lack of ability to deal with this rebellion, to put this rebellion down. Another one was his arrogance. So he was an arrogant leader. And due to the fact that there were a number of foreign policy issues at this time, the country was suffering economically and financially. There were major problems with economics and finance during really the whole reign of Edward, but uh, exaggerated during uh, the protectorate period of Edward Seymour. Edward Seymour was then replaced by... John Dudley, the Duke of Northumberland. Okay, so Dudley was a lot more charismatic, a lot more 
uh, well off, a lot more politically talented. Okay, so he began as the Earl of Warwick. So he wasn't even the Duke of Northumberland. He started off as the Earl of Warwick. But then, as you can imagine, was promoted by Edward. Promoted by Edward. Now that should be a capital E because it's a proper noun. And then, during this period of time, we have... Uh, a period of relative stability. Now, this is again when I say the word relative, it's rel if we compare it relative to the whole Tudor period, this was still very unstable due to foreign policy issues mainly, and also religious problems. There was a lot of religious unsettlement since Henry VIII died because of the backlash and the things that Henry did to uh, split the church. So. We'll talk again. We'll talk about that in a later video on specifically religion during Edward's reign. But let's go back to uh, Northumberland. So he was able to put down the uh, fifteen forty nine rebellion and was able to restore law and order. So he restored law and order, law plus order, at this point, and specifically restored law and order in the rural areas of England. Okay. Because that's where the majority of the rebellion began, in the more rural areas. So this allowed him to be promoted again, almost, as the Lord President by Edward. So Edward again did this. Bear in mind, bear in mind Edward at this point is only 11 years old. He dies at the age of 16. So you can work out he's only got a few more years left of his life and his and of his reign. Okay. So he again was a talented uh, politician, and due to this talent, he was able to uh, secure political and economic stability. Again, this is also relative. Okay, we're going to talk about it in more detail in another video. Like I keep saying. Okay, this is relative. The period of Edward and Mary's reign. So, Edward and Mary's reign, if we just write it down here, Edward plus Mary was seen as a mid Tudor crisis. This was a time when nothing was really stable. So, we didn't really have a stable foreign policy. We had a very uh, lax religious policies. We had people jumping from uh, Catholic on Mary's side and Protestant on Edward's side, and there was a real conflict at heart deep in that divide. And therefore, we did have rebellion and foreign policy issues. So, when I say that Northumberland achieved political and economic stability, we're talking relative to the mid Tudor crisis, not relative to the entire Tudor reign. And that's really it for Edward's, Edward's the, the introduction to Edward's reign and an overview of the two main players in Edward's council, Somerset and Northumberland.